and track. Um, why are we you here today? What's your purpose? And this is an important thing. A lot of people, and you know these people, you know these people around campus, they don't even know what they're doing yet. They're here, and they're like, yeah, that chiropractic sounds great. They've never been adjusted. They've never gone to a chiropractor. They sort of said, well, I want to be a doctor, but I don't want to go to med school, and I want to give drugs, and I want to be holistic, and bullshit. <laughs> Yes, Someone asked, was, uh, Harrison was asking if I knew Drew Hall, and I was like, yeah, I haven't, I, I, I've just spoke with him a couple times today. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I studied and interned with Drew seven years ago now, and uh, it was it was an amazing experience. Uh, I, I, I will, uh, the, the word, the, the swear words that I learned, over here, over here, this side, this side, this side. I'm not going to say here, I'm just That's fine. Um, but in any case, you know, the things that I learned was you know, the, the things that I, the, the people that I saw get their lives changed just made me wake up to what, you know, I mean, I, I was excited about chiropractic, but the reason that I'm here today isn't because I'm like, oh, great, I got, my back feels better now because I got adjusted up and down the spine. No, it's because my sinuses cleared up, my brain works better. When my, when my atlas is in place, I can get my arm. If, I, if you see me doing this, it's not Parkinson's or some other weird rolling thing. I'm just trying to get the arm set. Um, but it's not because of low back pain. You know, I had a completely different change in my life and what direction I was going in. And then I look around and see some people around me, and I'm like, wait a second. These people are sick and dying. They don't know what they want. They don't know that they're in such pain that their bodies aren't responding the way they're supposed to, and they're living just horrible, miserable lives. Half the reason I'm here this weekend is to sit down with uh, Coach Ward and has his innate legacy seminar downtown. And I've been working with Coach for two years. It was a light bulb moment for me. It was one of those realizations um, and I've had a number of these over the years to get getting me to where I'm at now um, about what I can do. The personal responsibility. The first time that I heard it uh, was when I was in uh, was at my Kung Fu Dojo back in Detroit, and our Sifu said, "Everyone in this room right now is over 18 years old. Everyone in this room is an adult and can make choices for him and herself." You are not living under mom and dad's roof anymore. So you got to grow up. And some people can do that. And some people can just automatically take that next step. That was a big step for me. That got me going out of engineering and into chiropractic. But the realization there are people who are stuck in a dead end, hateful life. Not just a job that they don't enjoy, but a life that is just miserable to them. And they don't have an answer. They don't have an out. Drew talks about on the power of upper cervical. If he didn't find upper cervical, if he didn't drive 20 miles south to see Dr. Tom Forrest, I wouldn't be here today. Because I wouldn't have been inspired by Drew to follow into upper cervical and Blair. But more importantly, he wouldn't be here today. His two boys, are a hoot. Uh, they, they, they are his father's son. There's no doubt about that. Um, they wouldn't be here today. Those are the kind of things that you've got to keep in mind. You've got to realize people are dying. People don't even realize how badly they're dying. Whether it's they're, you know, they're physically dying and they've got some sort of disease or illness or if their brain is just not focusing, they're not able to realize and fully experience their life the way they're supposed to. That's misery. That's hell. So what is your purpose? And, and if your purpose is upper cervical, it's a damn good purpose. You will never go wanting to save the world. There's a lot to be done. Go.
we got to look at the people who came before us. And what are they dedicated? Because I hate calling it the scan. I keep calling it thermography. But I like calling it the graph because the engineer, he pioneered a completely brand new way to think of things. Not once, but twice. Think about that. Miles Davis was quoted, or was at some fancy, fancy high to do party in Washington or something like that or New York. And as my cousin tells the story, um, some wasp B word, I'll be nice here, uh, comes up to Miles Davis. Miles Davis is like the only black man in the room back in the late probably late 60s, early 70s. And she comes up to him. And, you know, this is a big deal. There's a lot of people with a lot of money. And she comes up to him and asks him, why are you here? What did you do to be here? And he comes back with, I only created five different musical styles and movements in the past 50 years. <laughs> EJ only did two. Um, but they were huge steps, light years ahead of the time for what was going on. First, he takes chiropractic from dying to be completely and amazingly successful so that Palmer College stuck around so that we could be here today at all. So that's the, that, that was the first one. And then he started saying, what's most efficient? What's getting things done the best way. And he started looking at all of these, you know, these patients that they'd seen, and they're saying, look at that atlas. This person had huge results. Look at the atlas, huge results. Neurocalograph, neurocalometer, uh, mid-tympograph, upper cervical. I mean, BJ didn't, you know, anyone who says BJ came up with upper cervical is lying. BJ didn't. He just made it huge. And that's really the exciting thing, is he dedicated his life. We've all heard the story of, you know, someone saying, you know, wow, you know, they saw, saw BJ adjusting, and someone, you know, said, wow, I wish I could adjust like that. Um, you know, I, 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 I would give my life to do, to, to be able to adjust like that. And someone says, he did. A lot of dedication, a lot of work that needs to be done. And, you know, one of the things... I'm not sure what the next slide is. This is perfect. That's good. You know, he went and he ostracized half the profession. Just trying to figure out what was going on. Twice. Once with x-ray. Again with the neuro, uh, with the, uh, uh, the neurocalometer. Probably a third time without cervical, but most of the people who came on, on board with the neurocalometer said, well, all right, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll stick around with that. Um, what drives you to be great? One of the things that, because this is a big goal setting weekend for me this weekend. You know, that's, that's part of this seminar that Coach does. Um, looking at 2014, what do I want to do that's bigger? And I reset a couple goals a couple months ago, and it was a mon monetary goal. Now I had my monetary goals and my practice goals together. It was one, one mantra. Now, and so for whatever reason, I dropped the practice goals and just went with the money goals. I had such a, I've had a lot of stuff going on the past couple months, but I realized very quickly. That's the wrong goal. Money's going to come. Mm -hmm. What drives me to be great? I get crazy excited about anatomy and the atlas and the science behind what we do. So tell me, is that a beautifully drawn, accurate atlas? <laughs> yes or no? Yes. I like the yes, I like the good piece. Has anyone ever seen one look like that on x-ray? Or just as goofy as that on x-ray? They're never symmetrical. Mm -hmm. They're never perfect. And this is where Blair, you know, Dr. Blair got into it. This is where I, where I get excited, you know. 
Dr. Blair realized left to right, not necessarily symmetrical. Front to back, not necessarily symmetrical. You know, the masses can be asymmetrical, they can be one higher, one lower. Now, if you've got most, yeah, has, any, has everyone taken toggle just to get a sense of where people are at? You haven't taken toggle. Okay. Um, but you looked at a regular, you, you've seen an x ray of an AP spot, right? Okay, good. So if one lateral mass on the left is higher than the one on the right, and the person's walking around like this, are they subluxated? Or should we shift their head like this? And now put them into a subluxated state. Yeah, not necessarily. And this is where looking at the joint, trying to figure out what's going on here is important. Now, I, I just finished up the first year of the upper cervical diplomat. Amazing program. Uh, the neuro doc that came in, he's one of these neuro diplomats, came in and made me to say, oh wow, this is cool stuff. I'm dumb. This is cool stuff. <laughs> And the test was brutal. Boards quality, brutal test. Three hours, probably could have used four uh, to feel better. Um, but a buddy of mine did not pass, so he's taking the retake this weekend. And he was, he's like, wow, a lot of those crush questions weren't pertinent to, to practicing upper cervical. And I'm like, Yes, some of them weren't. But then he throws out a couple of things like, who cares about the ossification sites, whether they're primary or secondary? Who cares? So Josh and I were talking about this on the way over. And I asked him, what is the importance, what's the significance of a posture, uh, well, of a particle? Don't do it like Todd Hubbard says. Todd Hubbard insists that it has to be, you have to say it in a Sean Connery voice, posticulus ponticus, and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but what's, yeah, just, what's the significance of the ponticle? Any guesses? What do they tell you? Ponticle, on the back of an atlas. Yeah. It's probably physiological. Normal, not normal. Yeah. Yes. You could put it straight from the arteries or you go in the right direction. In muscles. Mm -hmm. That's good. Why don't I have one? I don't. I don't either. But Dr. Casey Crisp, who actually taught the anatomy portion of it, was a uh, he's got his master's in anatomy from Palmer. He's down <laughs> in Texas now. He has two. Some people only have one. Why does he have two and I have one? We're about the same age. Is it because he's got a bigger belly than I do? He's actually skinnier right now. What happened? Hmm? Well, we got some ideas. This is the, this is the next question. What are the primary ossification sites? More importantly, what is a primary ossification site? compared to a secondary ossification site? The body compared to dense. Hmm? Make the body compared to the dense. Make the status. You're, you're on the right track. It, it is, but, what's, but, but both are. Ossification sites, either way, are part of the bone that is your center for ossification. But what's the difference between a primary and a secondary? Correct. When? Just in time, just the order of which they're like primary, 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 is it a primary or is it a secondary ossification? Secondary. Is it a secondary? Or is it a primary? 
Or is it neither? <laughs> it's neither. Why? Why? Abbots on the side. Abbots on the side. Why do some people? What is that? What's an orange there? So, no. What? What is it? Uh, Sounds like a Thank you. <laughs> Specifically, you guys have all. Ever, everyone done spinal two? Okay. What is that? Because chip mortar grilled us on that one. No, no, no. We're looking at we're looking at this. The apples. Lateral apples. Posterior. We have a occipital membrane. Do we all have one? The correct answer is yes. Why, in some people, why do I have a, why is my all membrane and all ligamentous? Casey Crisps decides to ossify right here. What law is that? No. What law is soft tissue on bone? Davis is not. What goes through that foramen? How important is the vertebral artery for, for anyone? Pretty damn important, right? Vertebral artery comes on up, does a twist, comes right through there. If you see a polynicle on an x ray, Davis's law. It's not a primary ossification site. What probably happened to that young, to that individual? Yeah, yeah. There's maybe some trauma. Let's say this is their their films right here. What do we got? Two, three, four, five, six. There. Is that right? Yeah, five, six. Degeneration. Let's call that about. 15, 20 years of degeneration to get to that point. Talk to Kessinger, he explains that better. Uh, not including the three or so millimeters of internal thesis um, of two, three, no, three, four, and five that is seen in the flexion. That's, that's a trauma. They've got a chronicle. Can, can you play for me? I'm sorry. I don't have a Is there one like this, like up on there? Is that that thing? No, If you have, so, so, so here's, so, so here comes the vertebral artery right through here. Comes on up, does a loop, comes around here behind the lateral mass. In fact, it's going to be right behind your superior articular facet. So it's going to be right in here. Right? This area here ossifies. Typically, I see it ossifying this way going back. Oftentimes on one side, sometimes both. But they come in with a pontical right there. We can't see. Honestly, I don't think that's ossification. I think that's an atlas that's really, really screwed up. Um, but I see this, I say, you know, Mr. Jones, you got a pretty severe injury here, uh, or, or a pretty old injury. This has been around for 15 years. Plus, now you have all of these displacements along here, because you just got in a car accident. That's why we took flexion extension views. You just tore your posterior longitudinal ligament. Now we need to get an MRI to see how bad that is. But here's the bigger problem. You've got a posterior particle right there. And what we understand about how the birth process goes. And you said your birth pro you don't remember your birth, but you said it was pretty rough. It was a long, you know, couple, you know, eight hours. We know that there's a subluxation as a result. We know there's a subluxation here at that atlas. I suspect it's been there for your entire life, for the 40 years you've been on this planet. Because that had been pressure here that caused this area here, this ligament that is not supposed to be bone, to turn into a ligament or to, to turn into a bone. It's not supposed to do that. And I'll tell you what, you see a pontical on x-ray, first thing that you ask that patient, if they haven't already told you, 
you get dizzy when you stand up quickly. And they're going to be like, yeah, I get a little lightheaded when, you know, if I'm bent over. You're a genius at that point. Make sure you use that every time. What drives you to be great? This stuff gets me. Oh, I love it. It's common. Unfortunately, it's way too common. Unfortunately, there are too many people who are born with a subluxation because of the way they came out of mom. Either C-section, forceps, vacuum, the list goes on and on. Yeah. Well, they've got all sorts of stuff. It's, it's nuts. You guys want to have some fun. Find, you know, search, search out your peds docs and ask them, you know, or, or just hop online. It is 2013. Hop online. We have this thing called Google and just look up childbirth pictures. And you'll just go through stuff and you'll be disgusted. Keith Wasong has the best picture. <laughs> this kid is so messed up coming out, just drooling, purple, um, and he's, it's like, welcome to the world. And then he's got another one where the kid's getting Atlas adjusted. Welcome to life. You're not going to change how you're going to adjust that person. But maybe you're going to see them more often. Maybe you have to explain to them because you have this kind of degenerative, you have this kind of acute problem. I need to see you a couple times a week just to make sure things stay where it's supposed to be. Maintain that adjustment. Because that's what it's about. Josh was telling me you guys, you know, after what, third try you get is diversified? You know? Quarters. Third quarter. You guys are in quarters. I was on tries. Then you get a, then you get to go in there, motion palpation, and, oh, that doesn't feel like a thunk. I had hair before I had a knee chest adjustment. Let's just say that. It's true. It's true. I had an auto acid about the same time. So, you know, you put pieces together. Um, no, I, I shouldn't say anything bad about me, just they do good, great things. Um, just that one, though. Um, make sure you send this to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, you know, upper cervical does great things. But cranking on a neck that's like, well, that feels like it's tight and stuck without a set of films to tell you how it's supposed to be tight and stuck. Maybe that's the way they're built. Maybe they got crazy looking at looks like this with, you know, the posterior tubercle or the anterior tubercle sitting here. The ends is sitting over here. Everything is shifted. you got to know what it looks like. You've got to take pictures to see what's going on in there. Because if you don't, the only thing that scares me more in public speaking is losing my license. You're going to put a lot of time to be great. Why would you screw it up by saying, well, it feels stuck, I'm just going to do this. No, this is why we do very specific work. This is why we figure out exactly how that atlas has moved and put you back in the place where you're supposed to. You learn your anatomy in ways that you haven't thought about before. Who was it who asked about, Pearson, was that you who asked about the uh, the jaw stuff? Yeah. 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 So, in the toggle room that you guys have over here, I saw that you had a poster um, that um, basically had some Dan Murphy's stuff. That's the basic one. Learn that one for your test. Ask Dr. Murphy for the advanced one that upper cervical docs need to know. Because there is one. And it gets more in depth. And it explains how trigeminal nerve, what's come out at? Anyone in the second try still for a second try? What's come out at? No, you already had the nerve. I know. But where's the nerve come out at? Where does it come out? Where's the, where's the root of the trigeminal nerve? Coming out. Yeah, most of it. Right back here, right? Maybe a little bit higher on the brain stem. 
how long is that nucleus? You can't answer. How big is that nucleus for the trigeminal nerve? Mm. How about that big? What was this big? Mm. What was this big? What if in reality it's this long, coming from about the midbrain, and can go down as far as C4? So this is why I love Blair, because I can address C4 by itself. If that's a problem, it's causing someone to have trigeminal neuralgia because they just happen to have a really, really long spinal trigeminal, ne tri trigeminal nerve tract. This is the neat thing about how you can address things a little bit differently. But it's also the amazing thing. Who deals with headaches? A lot of people. Very typical presentation of a headache comes along right through here. Anyone recognize what I'm doing right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, trigeminal nerve, big deal. Very big deal. This is why you have to know your science. We have to know it really well. In fact, we have to know it better. Because, you know, what drives you to be great? If, you want, if, if you're in this for the money, get out now. The money will come. Don't worry about that. It'll happen. You, you will have a very happy lifestyle. But don't be in this for the money. There are much better ways to make money, especially where you guys are at. Learn a little bit of uh, uh, programming. They'll take you to the top in no time flat. I saw more BMWs and new cars uh, and Mercedes last night at the airport. Uh, I didn't even, I saw two domestic cars. One Lincoln, which is what picked us up, and a Ford uh, was the other one. Um, Yeah, don't get in for fame. In fact, most of us, you know, we're just going to be along for the ride and we're going to be behind the scenes more than anything else. Those are the big ones. Service. Now, if, you, if you really, really, really love to serve people, this is a great place. And when you realize there's a greater calling, Service is fun, but I'm realizing that my place needs to be in research. Clinical research, mind you, but it's still going to be research. And I need to look further and further and further into this. And we all need to figure out what our place and purpose is. If you do upper cervical, heck, if you do good full spine, you'll be fine. You know. Make sure you find where you're passionate about. If you love upper cervical, pick a technique and then dedicate your next five years to it. And if for whatever reason you say, hey, this isn't working, take a step back. Look at it again. We're doing the diplomat right now, talking knee chest, nuca, glare, atlas orthogonal, uh, no, at, uh, advanced orthogonal, orthospinology. We're taking a huge group of people who for the past 50 years haven't really gotten along and now they are. You know, I've, I'm a part of Upper Cervical Health Centers of America. I've, uh, uh, I was a student member uh, back in 2005. As soon as I you know, heard about what they were about, I got to said, I got to go check this out. Loved it. Um, been a practice member for almost seven years now. Um, the vision isn't about how many chest docs can we get out there? How many blur docs can we get out there? How many upper cervical docs? Doing upper cervical work, can we get out there? And people recognizing that we're doing pure upper cervical work. Because you know, a lot of people say, oh, but my back still hurts, doc. My back was hurting last night when I flew in. In fact, as we were driving into uh, Dr. Forrest's office this morning, my back was hurting in his Porsche. That made me feel really bad. Because that was a really comfy seat. And then he adjusted me. And as we drove over here in Josh's car, he's got he's got an older Honda. We'll, we'll, we'll put it my, you know, nicely. It felt comfy to get out of that seat. <laughs> so therefore, his seat is better than... Like I said, I felt really bad because I want a Porsche before too long. 
No. I was out. I got adjusted. It's better. It's not perfect. Body's got to heal. Principle number six. Time. And share those things. So figure out what you want to do. I love, you know, the reason that I think Blair pulled me towards it, opposed to like a Nuka. Now, the toggle was doing great. I, my first toggle adjustment was given to me by Justin Brown, who's down in Florida, great Nuka doc. He was a big Nuka, you know, he was into Nuka at the time. That was where he was going. But he gave me my first toggle adjustment. Let's back up. My first chiropractic adjustment, I was probably about 12. Pop, pop, pop. You're all set. I wasn't crazy about that. I mean, I, I liked it. It felt good. I got the relief I needed. Didn't need another chiropractic adjustment. Yeah, need is the right word. Didn't get one uh, when, until I was in college down in Terre Haute, Indiana, where I spent more time in this doc's office getting e-stim and heat and this, that, and the other before he would even put, you know, put thrust in. He took x-rays. Now, I wasn't happy about that at the time. I get it now. If he hadn't done the other stuff and just adjusted me, I think I would have been better off. But within about two or three weeks, I'm like, ah, I'm done with this. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm tired of it. I didn't like, he didn't teach me the principle. And then I can still remember, it was actually, it would have been 2000, it would have been this weekend, or right before this weekend in 2000, that I practicing Kung Fu, had a great fall, had a great night of falls, rather. You know, that's all we were doing. And the next morning, I felt like my right shoulder was, uh, no, left shoulder, was dislocated again. Sure enough, nothing was broken. You know, they gave me some drugs down at the thing, and I'm like, all right, I got to call this chiropractor up who's, who was trying to bug me a couple months back. So I get to see Dr. Jeff Buller, who, oddly enough, was one of Charlie Ward's uh, students at, a, at one point in time. And I get adjusted and he tells me the story. He tells me the principle. And I feel great. And I'm like, this is awesome. This is the lifestyle I want to lead. I'm going to be very physically active. I need this to stay physically active. But literally, I needed that. There was a huge need because I need to be in there at least once a week. If I was doing good, I could get by two weeks with a full spine adjustment just so my back, my low back didn't give me trouble. And you guys have such great seats here. You understand that if you sit in these chairs for any length of time, your back is beautiful. So first year Palmer, I'm still getting full spine, Gonstead diversified work. Now I got films. I, we know what's out. We know what we need to work on. I get into the uh, applied kinesiology work. I actually start spending my own money on a dock outside of camp, campus for AK work. And then I get into toggle class in the fourth try. And I said, I got to try this stuff out. I got buddies who are saying, oh, two bones. And in my brain, I'm like 24 on the spine. Got to have 24 put back in place. One, how does the one, two bones do it? Didn't get it at the time. <clears throat> until I got adjusted. This was the beginning of August. It was September before I realized that I hadn't had to get an adjustment. My low back hadn't given me any grief. I hadn't need to go to either of the other docs that I'd been visiting. And I'm like, this is it. And then I found a Blair doc. Then I heard Drew's story about how it helped his depression, helped his brain fog. And I said, Oh, this is just more accurate. This is more specific than toggle. And it is. And how are my sinuses sounding right now? Clear. If you can imagine sinuses, come on in. You can you can listen. We're gonna study. Well you can study too. This is better. I've studied for years and I'll tell you some good science. My sinuses are fine. I just flew in three plane flights, not going to do that again, uh, to get out here to speak to you guys today. 
Um, I'll come out here direct. I won't do three plane flights. Um, my sinuses were killing me last night. I mean, it was bad. And I got adjusted this morning, and my brain's starting to work better. My focus is better. This, this is why I love Blair, because it's, it gives us such a different way to look at things. Is that going? That's how I do it. <laughs> so why do I practice Blair? Aside from the fact that I think it's the best technique out there, it's really, for me, it makes perfect sense. Let me tell you about Kyle. Yeah, we got a few minutes and then I'll, then we'll wrap. So I want to talk about Kyle. Kyle came into my office. He had fallen 10 feet um, from about that height onto a concrete floor just like this, slammed his head, lost vision for a while, um, had a concussion, had, had a skull fracture, could not sit up without getting violently ill for a week and a half. Came into my office. His mom had good results with cardiomyopathy neuralgia, and she knew as soon as you know, as soon as he was good enough that she could sit him up, he was coming in. They drove an hour and a half one way to see me. He took the films. He couldn't even walk in on his own. Mom gave him a bunch of drugs so that he would be able to sit for the films. We took the pictures, and the kid walked out on his own. Now he was pulling an inch and a half short on his, I want to say his left leg. I might be wrong on that. But he was pulling an inch and a half short. One adjustment, immediately it went down to about half an inch. I had him rest for about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and then I had him check him again, and he was down to about an eight. Walked out of there on his own. Called up, I still remember sitting where I was when I made this phone call at six o'clock. He's like, oh, he's out back playing with his siblings. I said, no trampoline, because I knew they had one, and keep him off high ladders. And mom said, yeah, I think we can do that. He's been doing great since. He's been, I've had to adjust him. He's never had gotten back to that poor situation. Um, but I think I've had to adjust him, like I said, twice since. In fact, he needs to get in. Um, this, is, this, this one here did that's my wife. Not not the best picture of her. Don't film that. She can <laughs> not nice. see that I have that picture before. <laughs> my wife's sister is got a bunch of problems. Let's just say that. But she dated a Lombard graduate from National. <laughs> National graduate from Lombard. So she knows everything about chiropractic. So how could well, this one atlas adjustment help her? My wife has problems. We'll admit that. There's still, there's still things we're working on. But she's able to deal with them better when her atlas is in place. When it's out, oh, I gotta get that atlas back in place. And the worst part is, is I can't move it. I can move her axis. She'll let me do that. But I can't get her atlas back in place because I don't practice with the spinology or glossic. It's got to be a glossic adjustment. And there are better days than others. But I told her we can get her off some of these me hardcore medications she was on, and we did. Carolyn. This young lady has been unable, I can't remember what she came in with specifically, but one of the things, she gets motion sickness that you would not believe. She's, you know, just, she couldn't even read something. I mean, she, she'd be sitting on a bus, she's Amish. She'd be sitting on a bus, and she was telling me how she got used to sitting on the one side of the bus, and her husband was sitting on the other side, and when she moved to sit next to him on the other side of the aisle, because of things running, in, you know, running outside, she got you know this horrible dizzy spell. She could not, you know, she couldn't focus on things. She could, can't even if if she's riding in a van, she can't turn around to 
talk to people behind her. She has to be straight ahead forward. I give, give my patients paperwork for, you know, do's and don'ts, you know, to do this, you know, just read over this because there's a lot of stuff going on. They're not going to remember it all. She couldn't read before her first adjustment. And after her first adjustment, she's like, oh, i got to read this stuff. She forgot to. But she was able to read it on the way over. And, and you know, she's like, wait a second. I just read as we were moving. It's changed for her. This carpet wouldn't give her problems, but if there was a more elaborate pattern, that would be enough to set her off. And now, she brought her entire family. If you want to talk about a practice builder, go into a community where they talk about you, and hands down, you'll be busy and shake a stick at it. Hudson, you know, erupting, uh, I want to say Australia something like that. They posted a bunch of these pictures. Uh, and it's hard to see in this light, uh, but all that lightning, that's not a storm. That's all heat and all the electricity and, and just pure force of nature. And yet that is nothing compared to human nature. Unless power is not turned on, unless they are not connected. This is what we have to give to the world. This and more. This is why I do Upper Cervical. I hope this inspires you to continue on the path to do Upper Cervical, to do great things, and maybe in seven years you'll be speaking to this group, or you'll be at Palmer making sure they do it, or maybe you're going to be in one of my offices that I'm going to have to start opening because I've got that many people <clears> coming to me from all over Illinois. Because I can't drive to every one of these towns. It's killing me right <coughs> now. But it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And while we're young, we need to get our cervical recognized. So I'll leave you guys at that. I've got to